And here is another privileged, out-of-touch, far-left champagne socialist, The View's Sonny Hostin, who compares black Republicans to unicorns. Um, I thought it was interesting that the framing was a room of black Republicans. Where are they? Where are they? Because if you look at the stats, 77% uh, of, 81%, I'm sorry, of black men are part of the Democratic Party. Uh, black voters consistently align with the Democratic Party. 90, over 95% of black women are part of the Democratic Party. So these black men that he was speaking with, I, I, I'd love to see them. It would be like looking at unicorns. Well, and so yeah. I, I, I think that the sad thing is, you know, I agree with you, Anna, is that this came from the mouth of a black man, right? And so if you're pandering yourself and your community and your history to a man like Donald Trump, who is a disgraced, one term, twice impeached, convicted felon, we get to say now, is even more despicable in this country. Oh, talk about a lefty losing it. Joining me now is the host of Primetime with Alex Stein on Blaze TV. Alex, what do you make of Chelsea Handler and Sonny Hostens and, and their remarks about black folks supporting Trump? Well, uh, I kind of agree with the view host, Sonny, because, you know, uh, black conservatives are the new counterculture. They kind of are unicorns. And I, I look at that as a positive term, not a negative term, because people are waking up to the persecution that they've been, uh, you know, facing under Joe Biden. I don't Joe think Biden that's what not... she meant, Alex. I don't well, think you that's know what, what I mean? she meant, Alex. <laughs> of, of course not. But I'm just saying I agree that, you know, we do. I'm happy that people are, you know, breaking from the status quo. People need to do that. And when it comes to Chelsea Handler, you know, Chelsea Handler had a romantic relationship with 50 Cent, so now she thinks that she knows more yeah. than him because of they've had a tryst together. It's ridiculous that these people are so threatened that now we have a guy like 50 Cent who, not only a famous rapper, but a, a, a multi-millionaire, owns multiple businesses. He sees the writing on the wall, and the Democratic Party uh, is not helping black people, young black people, especially in this country. So it's good that people like 50 Cent are actually standing up for conservative values when all of these people, they think that they know being a black person better than an actual black person. It, they are the ones that are racist and make everything about race. Uh, and I think uh, Chelsea Handler was offering um, certain services to 50 Cent if he promised to back the Democrats. I don't know if that's an incentive, though, right now. Let's not get into that. Let's go to Washington, D.C. And uh, what the hell is happening there, Alex? The chief of the Capitol Police Department is marching with other officers in the city's pride parade. But meanwhile, we've got vandals defacing, desecrating monuments outside the White House with seemingly no consequences. And nearly naked women, possibly, holding a twerking competition in front of children at, at a family-friendly pride rally. It just seems absurd. At the same time, we've got three Washington State teenagers facing felony charges because they left scooter marks on a gay pride mural that was on the ground. Um, apparently that's a hate crime now, but uh, those who are defacing monuments are just uh, being allowed to go about their business. Uh, what is going on in D.C., Alex? That's my question to you. Well, D.C. is basically a controlled demolition. They just want the city to fail as much as possible because the crime is through the roof. I mean, there's uh, you know people that work on Capitol Hill. They're getting stabbed. They're getting shot. People are getting murdered at rates they've never seen in D.C. And yet, you know, in certain places, they get mad that there's a mural painted on the ground that gets tire marks. It's on the road. That's where tires go. I mean, these people are insane. Yet <laughs> a monument that's been there hundreds of years, they can just spray paint, they can deface. It's because we have a two-tiered justice system that doesn't want to actually solve the problems that they basically created on their own because they all they're doing is they're encouraging these protesters to do this. And why? Because they want us to fight each other so that we don't ever actually try to go after the people that are causing us all these problems here in America. They want to keep us constantly mad. They want Israel versus Palestine always in our face so that we can't ever come to an agreement and actually go after the politicians that are creating legislation that is making our country, you know, basically a lawless uh, uh, hellhole. 
Absolutely. And whether you're talking Washington, D.C. or Washington State, the place seems to be a clown show at the moment. Uh, to, to try to ruin those kids' lives with felony charges over that, I mean, that is astonishing. Now, let's talk about the border crisis. Fox News has obtained an internal Border Patrol memo sent to agents in San Diego after President Biden's executive order came into effect. The memo instructs them to release single adult migrants from all but six countries in the Eastern Hemisphere, classifying them as hard or very hard to remove. So unless you're from one of these six countries, you're fine. Uh, if you, Unless you're from Russia, Georgia, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Moldova, um, they're, they're the mandatory referral countries. So despite this Biden promise to finally do something about the border crisis, it seems like nothing is going to change. The overwhelming majority are going to be released into the US just as they, ha they have been for the last three years. Well, Rita, there's a sad reality that the Mexican cartels are almost as powerful as the American government. I mean, they can, these coyotes are sex trafficking, they're, you know, a drug trafficking across the border. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous if you look what's going on. Drug overdoses are up uh, over 100,000 drug overdoses this past year. And they could care less about the fentanyl that's coming across the border. And, you know, and they mentioned the six countries where people aren't allowed to come. There's still terrorists, people on the terrorist FBI watch list that are, that are getting caught coming through our southern border. So these immigrants that are, you know, seeking asylum, they know how to play the system better than most Americans do. And that's why they're able to get social services and help from the government and free flights and free hotel rooms in, in New York City when uh, a lot of Americans are struggling just to afford groceries or fill up their gas tanks. So is really, really sad because we have enough resources to help Americans, but our government ra would rather help out the citizens of foreign countries that don't really care about America when they come here. Now, I like the style of the uh, Boston Celtics coach. Uh, the media tried to get him involved in this race politics uh, and uh, asked him a race-based question, but he gave them a faith-based Answer. Let's have a look. Hey, Joe. Uh, Vince Gould with Yahoo Sports. For the first time since 1975, this is the NBA Finals where you have two black head coaches. Uh, given the plight sometimes of black head coaches in the NBA, do you think this is a significant moment? Do you take pride in this? How do you view this or do you not see it at all? I wonder how many of those have been Christian coaches. David Aldridge? Oh, I just love the silence there. They were just shocked, Alex. They were expecting some sort of victimhood statement. And instead he asked, how many of them are Christian coaches? Well, you know why they were so silent? Because in the mainstream media, they're not even allowed to basically acknowledge that God is real. So it really threw them for a loop. And we need more people that are actually not afraid of their faith. So that's a great guy speaking for what he believes in, not his race, but, uh, you know, his faith in the Lord. And it's not a first time. I remember uh, not long ago they were asking him about, I don't know, some royals who were in the crowd and uh, and he said, the only royal family I acknowledge is uh, Jesus and, 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 and Joseph and Mary. So he's, uh, he sticks to those lines. And that's why he's successful probably. Alex Stein, we love you. You've behaved yourself in the past week from what I can see. So thank you for that. But uh, I've got my eyes on you because some of your shenanigans of late are going to get you into trouble, son. I know. I'll try to stay out of trouble. I'll be in Las Vegas this week. So we'll see what happens at Las Vegas Pride. Oh, yeah, great. Great.